We're just waiting for it all to play out. Mm, yeah. We're gonna be talking about food and the people of God. Ooh, top 50 in the house. Hey yo. We cracking on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Study the Bible, not the sermon. Top 50. I see you. Hey, uh, pardon me. I'm just trying to share something right quick. Hey, uh, yeah. Friday night, like how we do. Hey, shout out to my kin folks, man. We got to get up, man. Hey, yeah. I see you on uh, Instagram, what's cracking? Facebook and YouTube, one more time, this episode two. Food and the people of God. <laughs> ain't no need to worry. I'm going to think about that because ain't no need to worry. I feel you. I don't know who stapled my joint. We're going to see what's up. We ain't going to take up too much of your time. Just wanted to uh, get some things across, put some uh, something on your brain, something for you to think about. Yeah, let's see this here. Yeah. Peace. Happy Sabbath. I see y'all as everybody falling in. Hey, don't worry about if I own the rights to this jam. I call it, I call this cry. Yeah. Man, it's a Bible study. I ain't no DJ. I'm just jamming right now. It's about to be over in a second. You know we live every Friday, 7.30 p.m. Approximately. More like 7.35. That means I was only three minutes late. You know how it is. And if you don't know, now you know. I am the locksmith. They call me that because knowledge is the key. My bigger brother, Top 50. So, as the B ride out, episode two, who do you break bread with? Who do you break bread with? Episode two, season one, food and the people of God. I already shared mine. I won't be mad if you share yours too. Yeah. All right. Study the Bible, not the sermon on Instagram. O. Smith on Facebook. Study Bible, not the sermon is the channel on YouTube. All right. And without further ado, we'll go on here and get into this. Oh, I hope I brush my hair. We're going to talk about. Meal time, right? Meal time. Meal time is so important, not just around the whole world, or not just around the world, also in America, right? We so distracted by stuff, sometimes we don't recognize how important food is, right? And that's the purpose of this thing. I told y'all sometimes uh, when a teacher need to be taught, sometimes you got to put a lesson together and teach yourself, and that's what time it is. Right, consider this. What role does not just food but meals play in your life? What roles do meals play in your life? We eat everything. We eat with everything, excuse me. Right? But meals and meal times supposed to have meaning. Supposed to have meaning. Right? Bill collectors trying to call me. Let me put that on. Silent. Well, I'm going to pay you when I get it, bruh. Shoot. But meal time is supposed to have a meaning, right? At least in the scriptures they do, right? 75% of the earth they do. Maybe not in the shy. Maybe not in your hood, right? But meals have meaning. Special meals around special occasions, right? Like when you graduate, you had a meal, whether it's eighth grade, college, whatever, right? Not just at the bar with wings, but a meal, right? When you get married, you have a meal. Right, we know somebody who getting married, right? Gonna have a big supper at the end when he get married, right? Even at funerals, 
afterwards you get together and have a meal, right? Where you do and eat stuff, eat with people that are special to you, right? Special occasions, right? Everybody wait around for each other, sit down and eat, right? First date is around a meal, right? Hopefully you didn't go on the first date to the Yellow Arches, right? I think I went to Don Julio's in Orland Park. Taco salad was amazing, right? It's almost as if it's the gathering, right? When you have a party, the first the first thing you tell somebody about is a food because that's important. And that's why we're talking about it, right? Even hardcore gangster rappers will tell you, don't break bread with the enemy or with snakes, right? That's what they say. That's what they said in the 90s anyway. I don't know. Right? You ever ate a meal with your enemy? I don't think I ever ate one with somebody that I was currently beefing with. Maybe if you die in Corleone or something like that. But regular people, we don't sit down and eat with our enemy. You know why? Because food do the opposite of what you do with an enemy. Food make enemies into friends. Food is how you reconcile Happy Sabbath. Food is how you uh, make people who don't even understand each other's language, uh, politics, disagree on everything, uh, come to a common understanding. And say, ooh, maybe you're not as bad as I thought you was. Right? That's how if you want to keep racism going, you separate people so they don't get to the meal part. Right? Food makes total strangers into friends. Right? I want to read something. I had to preach to y'all first. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. I should have left my hat on while I was preaching. Y'all would have thought I was going to preach all night. Luke chapter 22. I ain't going to take up too much of your time. I just want to put something on your mind. Because uh, I was wondering, while I look for this, I was wondering, do Jesus care how much we eat? Like last time I was on here, a lot of people was talking about they was getting hungry because of what I was talking about. And I feel you because I'm hungry now. But like when it's time to eat, do you think Jesus care how much you actually eat at any setting? Right? Like how many servings you have? And if you do, how you know? Maybe I'll share my thoughts with y'all later. Right? But right now, Luke 22 and uh, I want to read a couple things about uh, some food here uh, that maybe you overlooked before, right? You could share with somebody else or maybe you could grow from, right? Luke 22 and verse 1. It say, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Right, let's skip down to verse 13 because I want to just point out that that was the feast of Passover, what we're talking about. Verse uh, 13. It's saying, They went and found as he had said to them and made ready the Passover. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I die. I mean, before I suffer, excuse me. Right? So I don't know if any of y'all ever been to like a party. Somebody who's like going to jail or something like that. But that's kind of what we reading here. Right? He's saying, I desire to eat this last meal with you. So here we go. Kick it with you before I suffer. Ain't that something? Verse 16. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you. I will not drink up the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto him, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betray me is with me on the table right hold on one more almost there and truly the son of man goeth as it was determined but woe unto 
the man by whom he is betrayed. Right? Um, so, you know, sidebar. You know, the Son of Man came. Though that phrase, you know, Jesus only used that phrase a few times, right? Son of Man came. I think it's like three or four times where he talk about he came to... Uh, to heal them was lost. Uh, he came to heal the sick. I mean, and then uh, he came to uh, to do something to those that was hurt, right? And then this third time, it say he came, right? So I'm gonna read that again. Um, it say he came uh, out of nowhere. It say he come eating and drinking, right? In this same book of Luke, sidebar. Right, if you read the Gospel of Luke, it's almost always talking about him either coming from a meal or on the way to the meal. It's almost like the context of this book is centered around him eating and drinking. Right, and of course, the book of Luke is where they call Jesus a glutton and a wine bibber. Right, so coming back to it, um, let's go to John chapter 13. Because what just happened here in Luke 22, as we go to John 13, in Luke 22, he was just talking about the hand of him that betrayed him is at the table with him, right? It's kind of weird and bizarre that the apostles try to act like they didn't hear what he just said. They're trying to figure out who's going to come eat with us, right? This is so uncustomary that you would eat with a person that you know is going to betray you. That's what we're talking about. And the apostles, they don't get it yet. Right? So we're going to go to John 13 and read the same account again. All right. Okay. My notes was a little crazy there. But John 13 and 21. And it says, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Right? Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was one leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. And Simon Peter therefore beckoned unto him that he should ask of it who it should be he spake. The he then, lying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus said, It is to whom I will give sock when I have dipped it. Right? So now he just told him what's going to happen. This dude that's going to betray me, I'm going to do something with him and you're going to know it's him. Oh, I lost it. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. 20, 26. Um, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sock when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sock, he gave it to Judas Iscariot and the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Right? Now, he just said it was going to happen. It happened. And he told him, Do what you got to do. And then look what they say. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Like, what you mean you didn't know what the intent? He just told you that the dude that's going to betray me is here with me. And then, who is it? The dude I'm finna sop with. Here, here go the sop. Because mealtime is looked at in such a way that that's not the customary thing that you eat with your enemies. Right? Uh, let's see. Oh, that's it for that. Right? Because uh, everybody just act like, well, not act like they didn't know, but were bewildered at it because it's something new happening here. Right? Verse 28. Now, no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. Like, but you did know. He just told you why. 29. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus had said unto them, buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Nah, he just, no, 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 no. I said the dude that I give sock to, and he gave him sock. All right. Um, verse 30 He then Having received the sop Went immediately out And it was night 
Therefore, when Jesus had gone out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. And if God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Right? Everybody still lost. Still don't know what happened. Still acting like they straight out of towners. Right? Not because, again, because they were slow. Because why would Jesus break bread with the enemy? Right? They didn't understand the mission. Right? So check this out. When Jesus wanted to explain to himself, I mean, not to himself, to his disciples, right? We just read when Jesus wanted to explain himself to his disciples, he didn't give them theory. He gave them a meal, right? That's how important this food is. A lot of people ask me, why would I want to do this? Why would I want to talk about this? Because that's how important food is. Right, it wasn't spiritual. Yeah, we take it spiritual, and I think we take too much spiritual, too much, too much of the time. It's a lot of that physical going on, because he physically took bread and broke it, and we do it every Passover, right? He physically took the wine and sipped on it and passed it around, physically. All right, John uh, twenty-one. Flip over to chapter twenty-one. I'm going to read, like, I think I got one more thing after this, and then I'm out of here. I know a lot of people don't get to see this until on the Sabbath day in the daytime, and it's all good. I ain't tripping. You know what I mean? Like I said, shoot, I don't hear nobody preaching about food, so I got to preach about food because Locksmith needs somebody to preach at him about food. All right? John 21 and 3. Right, it's another thing, another story about a, a meal and how important it is, right? And we're going to see something right here. Maybe you can feel me. Uh, verse 3, it says, uh, Simon, Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. Now, this is after Jesus' resurrection, by the way. Say, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. So Jesus then died and resurrected. These guys think they finna go back to fishing. Verse 4, but when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Excuse me. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have you any meat? They said unto him, answer him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of the fishes. Right? Verse 7, therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, is it the Lord? Now when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat under him, for he was naked, and did cast himself in the sea. So he throw his clothes on and then jump in the water, right? Now, uh, verse 8, and the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes so right after a futile night of fishing disciples they encountered jesus who called him from the show acting impulsively as always peter dive in boom right and then when he get there something happened check it out uh verse nine maybe and as soon as they were come to land they saw a fire of coals there a fish laid thereon and bread right it says they saw but i'm talking about peter peter saw but he also smelled the fire of the coals right it's not regular fire that we're talking about here right and i don't mean it like it's some special magic fire i mean that the way that that's phrased that if you check your concordance is different than the way it's normally written right you're talking about fires of coal and not coals of fire Right, and that's a, a deeper, a deeper thing. But the only other time that it talk about fire of coals is in the same story, John eighteen eighteen. Right, that same fire of coals was when Peter was warming himself before Jesus' crucifixion, or before Jesus' uh, trial. Right, that's this same setup that Peter witnessed in here. Right again, that's the only time you're gonna check catch that in the scripture other than right here, John 18, 18. Right? So 
Now his judgment got a smell to it Or his lack of faith uh, I mean Has a smell to it Right and a look 21 and 12 Jesus said unto him come and dine And none of the disciples durst ask him who art thou Knowing that it's the Lord Right so the simple invitation From Jesus to the disciples Come have breakfast Right so Peter uh, denied the Lord to these coals of fire And now his restoration is with the same thing With a meal, right? Just like the Lord talked about his suffering And him being glorified And shared that last meal with them And now restoring Peter Because you know right after this he said Peter feed my sheep Right? Restore Peter with the meal Right? Um, one more thing I'm going to read Exodus 24 and verse 1 uh, it's this book, right, that uh, I, I, I didn't read all of it, right? But I know a lot of people don't like reading uh, books outside the Bible. But I was reading one, Exodus 24. It's called uh, Making Room, Recovering Hospitality, a Christian Tradition, right? It say a shared meal is the activity most closely tied to the reality of God's kingdom, just, that is, just as it is the most basic expression of hospitality. Right, that's why back in the day when you go over to somebody's house, they offer you food when you first walk in. Right? You gotta be a special person to sit at the table. Only special people make it in, special people get invited, special people get food privileges. Right? And it's a reflection of God's kingdom. We already talked about well, we didn't read it, but we talked about when Jesus come, we gonna have that uh supper of the lamb. Right? Exodus 24 and verse, uh oh, drop my jam here. Verse 1. It says, uh, and it's after the commandments, right? It says, He said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship afar off. And Moses alone shall come near, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people, all the words of the Lord And all the judgments And all the people answered With one voice and said All the words which the Lord have said What we do And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord And rose up early in the morning And built an altar under the hill And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel And he said young men Are the children of Israel Which offer burnt offerings, sacrifice And peace offerings and oxen Unto the Lord and Moses took half the blood, put it in the basins, half the blood sprinkled on the altar. Right? So this is the book, the covenant, right? He's making a covenant. Right? I was going to read all of it, but I don't think I'm going to read all of it. Let's read verse 9. Then when Moses, Aaron, Nahab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders, so that's 70 plus 474, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness and what else happened and upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand also they say they saw God and did eat and drink so at the foundation at the establishment of the covenant right when he first Got the covenant in the book And Moses read it to the people And they said yeah everything he said We gonna do that And he's like alright cool Go ahead and get the blood Sprinkle the blood on the altar And then boom it's time to eat now Cause that's what we do With food Right so why is uh, something like this important The food and the people of God Yeah here I go Why is that important Food and the people of God Because it's kingdom of God business It's food Right, and again, the question is, do you think Jesus care how much we eat? Right, we're gonna explore that as time go on, as time go on, right? Um, we waiting for this world to come, which is being represented here, right? We're gonna talk about some of the stuff they probably ate, some of the stuff they probably didn't eat. Further episodes as we go along. But in the meantime, in between time, don't forget to share this, right? Next week. We're going to be here 7.35 p.m. For a, probably a 30-minute hitter. We're going to talk about food and the people of God. And it's going to get deep. 
Don't forget to catch me on Thursday. Bomb of Gilead. Uh, what I'm going to talk about? Between the Feast. That's what I'm going to talk about. Between the Feast, prepare for the journey. Because what's supposed to happen between the Feast? Between eighth day and Passover, what you supposed to be doing? What's the guidelines? Right? We're going to chop it up and discuss that. So make sure you share this and uh, get ready for that Thursday. I think that happened at 7.32. 7.30 also. Right? So, study the Bible, not the sermon Friday evening, 7.30. And catch me on Bomb Gilead Thursday, 7.30. Lock Smith, Odai Smith. Boom. Hey, Brother Wu, I see you. What's cracking? Sister Rachel, Judea, what's good? I appreciate y'all hanging out. Share something. Turn.